Good evening. Uh, I don't know if I can hear anything yet. This is now Hi, everybody. 19, uh, sorry, Thursday the 14th of May, 14th? 2020. Yeah. 14th, is it? 14th, I think it's 14th. We're not sure of our dates or days anymore. <laughs> Um, sure, anyways, it must be. It must so be. delighted to welcome anybody who's with us and anybody who's going to join us for 90 minutes or so of a sing-song, sing-along, your Metal Kjol, um daily sing-song for the soul, which we've been <clears throat> doing every evening during the period of the COVID lockdown uh, since March 17th we've been doing this. So again, uh, delighted that we have your company again whether you're listening in real time from, again, we're at 7, <clears throat> 7 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time here in uh, Guidor in Wild West Donegal on the Wild Atlantic Way. And you may be joining us anywhere from Sacramento in, in California right through to Machete in, uh, in uh, Germany and right to England and Ireland. So people from different time zones, I presume different weather zones again. So we like to have our our um, <clears throat> our weather forecast. Well, well, it's not a weather forecast, a weather report. So our weather report from Donegal today is that it's been a, a bright day, a bit cloudy, um, bright, no rain, still cool, uh, northeasterly breeze. Uh, when the breeze, when you're out of the breeze, it's quite nice and uh, <clears throat> the water here which we entered again we baptize ourselves every day in the water now it's a baptism of ice as against our baptism of fire that we get when we come on here with you guys so we're not even sure if we're, we're even broadcasting, sure broadcasting so no. we just need to check but uh, we are broadcasting yeah all right i can see myself blowing my nose 20 seconds oh, later so dear. just pull here. it down so yeah. just i know sorry just yeah, just update it there. So we're just trying to get Mary on to her. Yeah. Should be so on to there. Should be coming so, on, yeah. That's, I so don't know if that's tonight, just, is it? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's just coming on there. <coughs> so just confirming that we have everybody with us. So once again, I say it's nice to have people come back uh, when they do. People are here on a regular basis. And also, uh, it's lovely to have people who've maybe dropped in. Um, some chap commented last night, I think he must have been, he, he applied to join <coughs> the Metal Coil group. And if you're with us, I just can't remember your name. You're from the Greencastle, Moville area. So you may have actually seen it on the Moville Men's website, uh, or Men's Shed website, that may be the case. But if you are, if you haven't been here before, what this is, is a just to try and emulate what it would be like being at a sing song. Um, so what we do, and this is specific, obviously because latency on the internet means we can't all be singing and hearing each other at the same time frame. So Mary and I here just sing the songs and then we place in front of you the words, uh, the lyrics or the words and the chords of, of the songs as we're singing them. And we can all sing together. We will uh, indicate where we are with the capo. <coughs> if we're changes the capital position we tell you and what we would really value is then people then would join us uh, in the comments um, and come back and comment to us and uh, yeah so anyway so. tonight we've got with us so far paul flaherty ray atchison we've got paul yeah paul ray atchison joe kane onion new york from london ray Byrne, cooley and fergus from drummond team so tonight is your your night uh, paul flaherty and the songs, the five songs that you um, suggested are Bodhi Nailami, Bright Blue Rose, Joe Hill, Orochi <coughs> the Bahawala, Sam Stone and a few others, okay? Yeah, so again, this is uh, our countdown to, uh, <coughs> to Sunday night and we have, so there's four nights, this is Thursday, again, I keep... To, the great or terrible things about my life is that this was run away on me, whether I like it or not. I had no idea that it was Thursday. I thought it was about Tuesday this yeah. week. I thought it was Wednesday, yeah. actually. <coughs> I, when I'll be really having problems when I think it's Tuesday next week. Uh, at least I'm behind myself, not in front of me. So, um, so we got, sorry, we've got Ruth Cleary from Letter Kenny. We've got Marion McFadden from Over the Road. We were over your way today, Marion. 
and we had a lovely uh, cup of tea uh, from our flask down at uh, Bonninver, down at the picnic table there. And then we went uh, over to Bonninver, and we went into the water. Actually, we dipped rather than had a big swim. Nancy is here from uh, Nashville, and we have Dave Kelly from Dublin, and uh, Nigel O'Mahony. Well, Sheila McMahon from Dundalk, and that's it for the moment. Um, so Nancy is saying they're feeling good, proud after seeing the Blue Angels fly over Nashville area in honour. I'm not sure what the Blue Angels are. I, I, I presume it's a bit like the um, <clears throat> the English Red Arrows Air Force. I presume, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not sure what we would have in Ireland flying over us. We'd probably have a few um, biplanes from the Second World War. Uh, thankfully, we don't have an Air Force. Oh, sorry, that's unfair. I don't. We don't have a let's say, a competitive or substantial Air Force. I don't think we'd have, I don't even know if we've the sort of things that have, like, presumably Blue Angels, etc. Mm. But, <clears throat> again, I suppose, what's wonderful is the recognition, the public recognition, and I, Mary and I were talking about the fact that we haven't been, I suppose, remembering and, and giving testimony to those people at the front line who've been helping out for the last while. So, again, maybe tonight we'll bear, bear there those people in mind, front line, particularly, I think, front line health workers, because... So many of those, I mean, certainly in Ireland, percentages of 27, 28% of people who have been diagnosed with COVID-19 have been health workers, uh, mm. the majority of those being nurses, probably because that's the largest number. And then there have been doctors and orderlies and carers and assistants and porters and everybody else. But uh, we have to have been really grateful for those for the last couple of months. I mean, Ireland, next week, next Monday, the first phase of hopefully a journey forward in this means the number of retail shops etc are going to be open so a new phase step starts next week but we are very grateful to those people who are helping to hold us together during this so we're going so to start just off to with say first of all that, that the fly the, the angels are um navy jets that fly all right. information at all shows louis brown is here from suffolk and Teresa laverty is here from bally in the county of donegal yeah. So again, just uh, we'll get on with the song, but the, the, what we were doing for the last number of days is uh, a Desert Island Discs concept um, where we had uh, um, people po posing the, the five best or the five songs out of our songbooks that they would love to have with them if they found themselves indisposed or placed somewhere where they were isolated and didn't have access mm -hmm. to <coughs> other information. So people have been very um motivated and encouraging and, and everything and uh, again paul flaherty from cork so i think paul you joined us sometime into the early stages of this uh journey that we've been on and i think you were motivated to pick out or take out a guitar and and get going with it again so i hope it's been a good journey for you and i hope you enjoyed the songs that we sing along together but that have been nominated by you so the first one is boy jean mm -hmm. <clears throat> again boy jean Islamy is a song I can't speak, <coughs> I'm 64 years of age, I cannot speak what it's like for people who are in, in primary school, etc. now, but for everybody of my age and years before me and afterwards, this was a song that everybody learned in school, uh, a very <coughs> it's a beautiful, simple melody. But for us, again, again just to remind people, because we wouldn't have done this for a while in terms of Google Maps, to show you where we are based, uh, um, no, we're not based in, so where are we based here? Let I just click, click it here. Sorry, this doesn't seem to know where we are at the moment. Sorry, just, yeah, sorry, I'm probably pressing me the wrong button here. Oh, so I can't determine my, lo my location service must be switched up, but that's where we are. That little sign up in, in, um, in, uh, Northeast Donegal, you can see that there. But the reason I want to in, I want to zoom in here and show you this beautiful little island, which is as you can see is there. You can see us up on the top right. You see us in the yellow. Then you walk down towards the beach, and you get out to this island called Gola Island. So this is the island about which this song is sung, a song about it, Asquega, um, of a guy sailing his little rowing boat or his curragh out to the island. <coughs> uh, and subsequently from that island, then subsequently moving to another island, which is north of here, as we move up here to Tory Island. So if we move down from the bottom left of my screen up as we move upwards and zone, zone in here, there's Tory Island, about 11 or 12 kilometers off the mainland. And Philemy, the guy who's sailing his boat, uh, sails away off up there and his boat is 
unfortunately uh, shipwrecked or broken with the and him and his fish the fish that he was on so well, that's actually, what the song interestingly uh, Philemy was meant to be an Ulster chieftain and um he was trying to escape from his uh, pursuers, whoever they were. And uh, in some, like this song was popular in the 60s and 70s, and I believe that they still teach this to children in school today. Uh, anyway, and in some, some people omit the last verse. Okay. So we're going to sing this in capo position too. Hopefully, again, uh, <coughs> the chords will all be accessible for everybody. Hope you enjoy them. <coughs> Capo position two. <clears throat> agree that they were very beautiful on a matter pig words there bodin b duck bodin biosach bodin boyach the b b b b and then the um bodin dearach bodin jaunt the d d d d fabulous i mean i i think that's what i love about the the mm. intonation or whatever of those songs so really once we're on this song louis brown says there's an amazing seabird colonies on tory island hundreds if not thousands of puffins there okay yeah, I mean, one of the guys who's often here, Paul Anderson, I know he was out there with his son last year, a lovely time out on Tory Island. <clears throat> and so funny, since Mary and I moved here five years ago, uh, we haven't been to Tory. I was there with my sons when they were very young. Uh, we went on a boat over to Tory when it might have been six or seven years of age, and it was a real experimental journey there. And we keep meaning to go, but you know what it is? Just want to explain, it's just not that... Uh, that uh, were afraid to go out even before the before the COVID times. But I just want to take you, see that yellow place? That's where we live. And everything to the left of that to the sea is what they would call here in this area, what's called a mocker or commonage. And it's a basically wild land that you can walk along that there might be some sheep or cattle on or whatever. And you can see there, there's three magical beaches. So yeah, just look at those beaches. I mean, that first beach there is about... Uh, it's about a kilometre, eleven hundred metres long. This well, next that, the beach, the next Arthur beach, beach yeah. the next yeah. beach yeah. is two hundred and some metres long, and this beach is say three hundred metres long. Then there's another beach up here. So then, if you move slightly up there, this area is where Mary and I swam today, 
this little cove in here. It's called Bun on Inver. So if you think of Inver as in Inverness in Scotland, which is a narrow sort of fjordy type of thing. So that natural harbour space there, that's where Mary and I went in at that slipway in there today. Not sure if you can uh, just see if there's a... Okay, we can actually see it. So that's what it looks like from there, exactly where we were swimming today. Uh, just walk down that slip, sli uh, slipway. Now, I have to, it's a slippery, slippery, slippery sli slipway, I have to say. But again, that's the, the magic. So we're very fortunate to have had the nurture over the last number of weeks to be, um, I suppose, to support us in our journey and what we're doing. So the next song we're going to sing, um, uh, Paul, which you nominated was Bright Blue Rose. Um, and... Uh, so we'll get through these and we'll have a bit of a chat of what we do after these. But again, Bright Blue Rose, another, another magical song. <clears throat> I think written by Jimmy McCarthy, who'd be a, a man of... He's now, uh, he was born in 1953 and he's from McCroom in County Cork. I was thinking a fellow Cork man. Yeah, and he wrote other songs that you'll be familiar with, like Nadine, The Contender and Ride On, which we did relatively recently. So just we'll tell you a little about a bit about him. Like his father, he suffered from anxiety most of his life. And actually, when he was born, he weighed 13 pounds and he was very poorly and fragile. So his grandfather took him as a baby to live with him. And there he remained until he was four years of age in Mill Street in County Cork. So that's a little bit about him, and uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about the song afterwards. So I keep thinking Jimmy McCarthy is uh, no, no harm to the job, but the fellow who writes magical songs, who other people tend to <coughs> um, deliver in a much better voice perhaps than he does. And I, would, I wouldn't want him to take, because this is a knock, a knock on his voice, but so people like Mary Black, I think, have taken this song <coughs> and you know turned it into a, a work of art. So again, hi, Cathy Anderson from, again, up with Peter from Stranorla and uh, Colin Ferder is watching in. Say hello, Colin. And uh, again, Colin, his wife, we met himself and his, uh, would it be five? Can't count. They were children. running in every direction. Gorgeous kids. Um, <laughs> three boys and two girls there yeah. again today. And uh, wonderfully use of your time on that same mocker I described so just to say to you imagine that this guy has the advantage of this beautiful place as well but that down on the mocker here if we just go back imagine there the, the opportunity that you have on all that surface there to be knocking golf balls so we had the young fellas busy knocking all sorts of day glow coloured golf balls there great action and a great way of tiring out very uh energetic kids but you know what i think colin i think it's a wonderful thing wonderful opportunity despite all the other things for parents who have their kids at home if they can manage to get them out and you know <clears throat> as they say a brush and no do a mock three soul and quit <clears throat> nature breaks out to the eyes of the cat but to allow young people to get in contact with the nature is magnificent so we're going to sing bright blue bros you sing it open uh, join in join along with us that's what what we're here for sing dance play whatever I skimmed across black water without once a bird on to the banks of an urban morning that hungers the first light much, much more than mountains ever do. She liked the thoughts beside Dolphin, and the 
bright blue rose that lives all those two thousand years and still it goes on earth is death and is life eternally lovely song lovely song many people ask what is, what is that song about and um, who's the 13 pound baby you were talking about a 13 pound baby it was Jimmy very, McCarthy and he was very Louis Brown says it's for a 13 pound baby you'd imagine very so. fragile yeah, he was <laughs> <laughs> he was. I think. He, were you fifteen pounds or thirteen? <laughs> and he's not a bit. Was that after me first meal or not? He's I not a, a bit fragile. I had a steak before he was waiting for me first meal. Yeah, no, that was Jimmy McCarthy, and he's only a small person actually. So a lot of people ask, "What is this? What is this all about?" So What's the black what about hole, this song? All right. So do the black, people ask that? Do they? Oh, they do. They do. If you look Who at did they ask? if you look at me, me, because <laughs> I am the ah. I am the expert researcher. People are ringing here. agony aunt Mary. So what's it all about? What's it all about? So for instance, <laughs> I can see why Paul. Um, Baby or turkey? <laughs> chose chose his son. Was it a thirteen pound turkey? Yeah, yeah, it's only a small turkey, folks. <coughs> it would hardly do two people. Come on. So um, anyway, the Blackwater, of course, is a river in Cork. So I can see why you chose the song. A geek is a freak or a socially inept person. An alchemy is a pseudo scientific study of. Um, a dictionary. This is dictionary class. Base then. metals to gold. No. So people ask, is there a religious, is there a, reli a religious connection to the song? And there is. What about the sexual because, connotations, Mary? Because two thousand years or more, that's that's kind of indicating that it's they're talking about Jesus Christ here, and the blue rose. I mean, what's this about the blue rose? So the blue rose is kind of an unattainable. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's not beyond nowadays, certainly. All right. Beyond the realms of possibility. It's like Scarborough Affair. Get me a blue rose there between the salt water and the seas. So the other thing <laughs> is there were there were blue roses, like three to be precise, on the Masonic apron. So I don't know. I don't know. And min most people don't actually know what this is about. But it's obviously about... Mostly Jane. Jimmy McCarthy, I'd imagine. Mostly Jimmy McCarthy, yeah. It's great when you write a song and then, you know... Somebody else reads something really important into it. Like last night, Mary tells us that Bob Dylan wrote Blowing in the Wind in 10 Minutes. That's what he said. And he was telling us that now, only after he's made a zillions upon zillions. When he was trying to make a hit out of it, he said, Oh, I worked really hard at that. You'd have to have a PhD. I, 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 don't, I, I don't agree with you because <coughs> I believe it doesn't matter whether he wrote it in 10 minutes or 10 hours. It's still a very good song. You know, if he was I on time and materials, it would have mattered. So, so we're going to sing a. What are we going to sing? Uh, Joe Hill, Joe Hill, guys. So we again, didn't... what we're doing at this point in time is uh, your Desert Island Discs, and it's your turn, Paul Flaherty. So, Paul, uh, I, you do seem to be dedicated to your life in Cork. Come on, boys, and dee da da, 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 with them all, says the boys of <laughs> Fairy Hill. Uh, I can play uh, that in the mandolin. What? The 13 pound baby. I wouldn't like to be delivering it, mind you. Would you? <laughs> yeah. Would you? I don't know. I, I have to be fair <laughs> enough. I mean, I, I think I'd be uh, around for quite a while. Uh, um, anybody out there had a 13 pound baby? Because I didn't. Come on. No, I mean, no. to be half grown. Do you know what I mean? She'd be turning to school after a week. <laughs> well, actually, what it said about that baby, and I, I don't know what his problems <coughs> were, but maybe he was an anxious baby, because, as he said, he's been anxious all his Mary, life. Mary, if you were born at 13 pounds, you'd be anxious too. He said, where's me grow up? I don't <laughs> no, want any of that baby food. That's the thing about it. He, he refused all, all food. <laughs> he was trying to lose weight. He was on a diet from the day he was born. <laughs> so Nancy says she loves that song. She has it on a CD. Jesus, Nancy, you must have a huge collection of CDs. John McDonald, hello, John McDonald. How are you this evening? John McDonald, I think you're a secret... Uh, Admirer. Uh, <laughs> no, I think you're a secret... Uh, what do you call your man from uh, Sultans of Swing? Angie, come on. Tess. Dire Straits. What Dire. do you call him? Oh, yes, I... I, I think you're the. I think you're a secret Dire Straits fan. Paul Farley wouldn't think it now. It was three pounds. <laughs> My God! T t tell you what, you were probably thirteen pounds, and it just struck off the number one. John McDonald, can you tell us like what's the psychological impact on midwives of delivering thirteen pound babies? Well, on mothers. Kids? You mean on mothers? On Mother's Day. On mothers. <clears throat> No, on the, on, on the midwives, no, by the mothers. So Joe, I, Joe Hill, he, so died, Joe Hill. he died in 1915. He was somebody executed. told us the other day, Paul Anderson, Joe Hill the guard, somebody or other. Anyway, open, we're playing it open. Get the bit of a rebel in you as well, we're doing these for the last couple of nights, guys. I dreamed I saw Joe Hill last night, alive as you are me. 
desire but show your ten years dead I never died to see I never died to see In Salt Lake Joe's desire to him Him standing by my bed They framed you on a murder charge Says Joe, but I ain't dead Said Joe, but I ain't dead Bosses killed you, Joe. They filled you up with lead. Takes more than guns to kill a man, said Joe. But I ain't dead, said Joe. But I ain't dead. And standing there as big as a life and smiling with his eyes, said Joe. But they forgot to kill. Working men defend their rights, Joe Hill is at their side, Joe Hill is at their side. From San Diego up to Maine, in every mine and mill, where workers strike and organize, Joe Hill is at their side, Joe Hill is by their side. So Cathy Anderson says, no, Mary, God, this is a real confessional here. Cathy Anderson had a nine and a half pound baby and that was big enough. And he's still big enough. He's still big enough. Mark Knopfler. Mark Knopfler. So, yeah, uh, no, John McDonald, I think, I think you're, uh, you. you're, you're either that you're practicing in the background. So, John McDonald, you were going to visit us. I got a, a text or a call from you out of the blue a number of months ago. Uh, it seems like a number of months ago, all pre-COVID time, that, that you're going to drop up and visit us in West Donegal. So, with the beginning, as we see, of the rising of the of the um, the burqa or the maze or the cloak of uh, isolation that appears to be on the cards at the moment, we can look forward to the idea of looking forward to an idea of what we might do at another time. Uh, so we've four of your songs already, uh, Paul, how quickly time flies. You chose your first five songs, your preferential songs, Boys in Anatomy, Bright Blue Rose, Joe Hill, Old O'Shea de Vahawalia and Sam Stone. So on song number four, which is going to be oh, Old O'Shea de Vahawalia, lovely, lovely. Um, okay. which we sang a number of times. Mary and I were just talking today, how it would be nice to, uh, where are we here? Uh, you know, in the next number of days. So we did point out last night that we're, planning an exit strategy uh, so we're going to play our last of these um, sessions the, the Mel Kjol daily sing song for the soul we're having the last one of these sessions on Sunday, Sunday the I think Sunday is the 16th or 17th, 17th I think so it'll be exactly two months of the day or date since we started on March 17th and we want to experience this as a a journey um a project and where Mary and I are firstly delighted to have had the opportunity to experiment with this thing and to do it and to be joined with uh, with such gusto and inclusiveness by everybody who's been connecting in with us and the commentary and particularly helping Mary with the comments etc. Uh, I was going to ask you a question there how do you know it was Paul there was nine and a half Stone. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, born. sorry. You don't know there was Paul. It could sorry. have been one of the girls. I'm sorry, But sorry. Kathy is now after saying, "Do not presume, Liam," because sorry, yeah. it was her second son. Sorry, I just, I just was blinded. I was blinded, was blinded by your darling son, Paul. Blinded. I know he was. I want to set him up there. I know he was only nine and a half. I know he was your favorite. I know he was only <laughs> nine and a half pounds, not nine and a half stone. That was just a joke. So uh, again, one of my bad jokes. and and um, you know, I think one of the things you know, a lot of the feedback, and I, I was reading through the comments, it was just before we came on. I, I said last night, Mary, Mary manages the the commentary very well, and the the uh, the comments that have come back, and I think the level of activity in the comments is the only way in which we can get feedback in, in the interaction of this dynamic. So please, you know, if you want to 
re leverage something into the conversation do so I just but i was just looking at sorry looking at i went right through the comments um before we come on there tonight it was a bit like look you know it was a little preparation for my lectures in the old days it was speed reading etc but yeah really good comments and reflections there and you know it was tinged somebody said there, there might have been reactions of some you know enjoyment tinged with a bit of sadness but i think really i, I don't i don't think if you you shouldn't be sad about something that you hadn't valued in the first place. I mean, because you're really sad if you're sad about something that doesn't matter or never did. Um, so I think it's a celebration of the opportunity that we've had to share a bit of time with each other, to distract ourselves. Like the great thing is, Mary and I have no idea what goes on in the news anymore at six o'clock. We'll hear it later on. But we don't need to worry about this. We don't, The bingo numbers game that's been going on for a couple of months that we can't have direct impact on. It was important to distract ourselves. From I don't group. believe we heard news yesterday. And we, didn't, <clears throat> we haven't heard any news so far today, so we have no idea what's going on with COVID at and the moment. Not for any other reason, other than we're just tied up at doing, running, doing other things and keeping ourselves occupied. Mm. And I think that's great. I even started reading again. It was even better still. So just to say that on yeah. Sunday night, Fergus, it'll be your songs. And uh, Saturday, Saturday night, is. Sheila McMahon. Sheila. And uh, tomorrow night is Peggy. Peggy from mm -hmm. Pittsburgh. Uh, Peggy Clancy. So what, yeah, what we'd like to do over the next number, we're going to finish these songs with all and then explore the possibility of just looking at what we can share in terms of maybe looking back over the last two months, what songs we've enjoyed together and to get your various comments, etc. And also it is really about reflection about what went well, what's the, in terms of this concept and the value of people communicating with each other and, and also being positive in, in a period of really bad. Like mm -hmm. if you wanted to watch Sorry. paint dry, watch a kettle boil, you know, be in a dark room and look for the darkness, there'd be no better a, a excuse in the last couple of months. We've held each other together well. So, uh, so let's that be a bit of a rousing song. Mm -hmm. We're singing it on four, capo position four. So you get into your boat, <coughs> join... Uh, Grony Will, Grony O'Malley, as she heads over to see King, what do you call her? Queen, Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth, yeah. Queen Elizabeth. How are you, Lizzie? How are you, Lizzie? I'm coming over here to, to grab a couple of your men while I'm at it. Anyway, all those shit about will you? All those shit about two Galway women with us here tonight. One is Anya New York from London, who comes from Salt Hill originally, and then we've got Marion from over the road who comes from Mike Cullen. So I'm sure you won't mind if we sort of um, include them for, for a mention in relation so, to this song. Guten Abend, Jürgen Brown of Deutschland. Great to have you back. So Jürgen and his wife, and what's his wife's Anika. name? Annika, no, oh no. God, I'm Jürgen, you'll have to put your Tell wife's name again. again. But we met the two, we met them, that couple in their Frankie motorhome, lovely motorhome, 
about 20 minutes drive north for us in a place called Makarotic. So again, for Jürgen's sake, just to remind you. So a couple of years ago, we were just as we as you do, you get into your motorhome and do a 20 minute drive from our little yellow spot there and you go up around the coast, you go up to the top, you go around the corner and you go around this area here, in here, and now you come, wow, look at that now, look at that for a swerving beach. And if you're looking for a majestic looking beach that's there and you go in there to a place, that, there's the, where the Ferry for Tory Island goes on, there's a massive big car park there in Macherorotig, they call it. And just in there is where we met in with, uh, in that car park, we met with Jürgen and his wife. And, and Lolo and Lulu. Two young French uh, girls that were, we had, uh, I suppose, rescued from their, ice, their, their sense of hunger and give them a feed as they camped beside us for the night. And she had uh, her banjo with us and we sang a few songs and Jürgen got in and joined with the programme. So I hope you're well. I know you've come in with us a couple of times when we've been here, Jürgen. We wish you well, auch guten Abend also. Um, and I say, like all and like Natalie, you're so welcome, hopefully in the future, to share the pleasures as we have of beautiful Wild West Donegal. And the reason we came here, two reasons, people were very, very friendly and still continue to be so. Mm. And they didn't have alarms in their houses, thank God. So they were two lovely things. So we're going to go on to, we've done Oro Shedeva, will you? And we're going to def 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 the the final of your fifth five selection of five songs is Sam Stone, so people will remember that the writer of this song, Sam Stone, John Prine, died a number of weeks ago, probably in the early days of uh, the the um, of the COVID uh, 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 growing out of control in the states mm -hmm. in the early stages of of this. Yeah, I think he was about 73 or something like that yeah, there, had underlying died, conditions. Exactly, yeah. But the writer of some majestic songs, of which this is one of them, and there, Colm, further, you're there and you were talking, Colm has said he played a song that somebody had written and asked him, asked him to sing it uh, about the COVID uh, thing, I'm not sure, but I think it's, I done, to the, it. it's done to the tune of... Speed of the Two sound meters. of loneliness, I think, isn't that right? <clears throat> is, it, is it the speed of the sound of loneliness? Anyway, we'll think about I that. I think so. Yeah. So we're going to play this open, lovely, mm -hmm. lovely song again. Oh, um, I know what it was called. He, I love the the chorus in this particular. Two, the two K <laughs> COVID song. Oh, the two K COVID song, because obviously, within Ireland, <clears throat> for so long, people have been restricted to uh, staying within a two kilometer radius of their homes. So. Sam Stone came home So this is open To his wife and family After serving in the conflict of his shame And the time that he served Had shattered all his nerves And left him Screw round his brain and gave him all the confidence he liked with a purple heart and a monkey on his back. There's a hole in Daddy's arm. songs never last too long on broken radio Sam Stone Sam Stone's welcome home didn't last too long he went to work when he spent his last time and Sammy stood Stealing when he got that empty feeling for a hundred dollar habit without overtime and the gold rolled through his veins like.
like a thousand railroad trains And he eased his mind in the hours that he chose While the kids ran around wearing other people's clothes There's a hole in daddy's arm songs never last too long on broken radio Sam Stone was alone when he popped his last balloon climbing walls while sitting in a chair and he played his last request when the spoons felt just like death With an overdose hovering in the air But life had lost its fun There was nothing to be done The train is high steady bottom of the GI Bill a flag grape casket on a local hero's hill song never lasts too long on broken radio so i hope you like that uh paul and uh, you're nigel enjoyed the song last time good to hear it again it's a sad song mm. nigel says yeah but it's lovely again it's, it's a, a beautiful, I, beautiful song you know i i used to only ever know the uh chorus of that i picked it up somewhere but I, my memory of that is driving to uh, driving my kids to school in my big big kids and dad's van with them um, my kids and jeez I'm embarrassed you driving that van with kids and dads written all over it but I'd be singing I love that those uh, you know there's a hole in daddy's arm where all the money goes Jesus Christ died for nothing I suppose sometimes you just get caught in a little riff or something like that. so it's a lovely song so there you are um we have Paul's five songs chosen. So I think Paul had thrown in a couple of uh, subs like everybody else has been sneaking in their back pocket, the extras. Um, so there's one of them here with saying, Don't Let the Bastards Get You Down. And I know that's a song I think Ray Atkins and lots of other, um, you know, we have a lot of Chris Christopherson song lovers here as we are ourselves. And uh, <clears throat> what I think about this song, I, the only t I've heard him sing this live in the in the Olympia in Dublin maybe fifteen years ago or so. The Olympia Theatre is a small, it's an old style, semicircular, three layered um or three three floors, uh, uh um theatre where you're always actually quite close to the artist. So again, and he was playing there I think for a week, five nights in a row. Mm. Uh, and again, just the authenticity with which he sings these type of songs, I think, are gorgeous, you know. I think we saw Chris Christopherson a number of times, didn't we? We did, but it yeah. was just that on that particular... I remember him singing this song. I never heard the song, and I went chasing it after it, but I just thought the imagery in the song was fantastic. Open, <clears throat> open. I think it might be open. Yeah, I think it's open. They're killing me. Just gotta wonder what my 
daddy would have done If he'd seen the way they turned his dreams around I just gotta go by what he told me Try to tell the truth and stand your ground Don't let the bastards get you down Mining roads, killing farmers, burning down schools full of children, fighting communism. Oh, and I just gotta wonder what my daddy would have done if he'd seen the way they turn his dreams around. I just gotta go by. So the name of that song was what attracted me when I heard him sing it, Don't Let the Bastards Get You Down. Because the first time I'd ever come across the imagery of that was I was leaving this consultant um, to the Irish Railways, a dear man, uh, an extremely mentorial gentleman to me, a small six foot six, big tall man, an elderly man for me in my young 20s as an engineer. I was leaving him out to Dublin Airport one day and I was driving this little Fiat 500 to those who remember those most majestic, magically beautiful little cars, the Cinquecento, Cinquecento, which had a a, 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 a a roof, a full back roof. And David was so tall, his head was sticking out of the car like um, in the Noddy, in the old Noddy, Enid Blyton and stuff. Was it Enid Blyton Road, Noddy, no? Maybe. Yeah, uh, yes, of course. Was it? By yeah, the, course. And so his head be sticking out. And I was ventilating like hell about the senior management in the railway. I'd just been at a ma uh, project development meeting with a series of people who were making it up as they were going along. I didn't realise that was, that was the rest of my life was always going to complete bluffers, liars and everything. I was ventilating about the wrongs and rights, a young rebel like me. And David got out, he listened as he did, a real calm Protestant gentleman, listened to me on the way out. And he said, thanks for the lift. And he went off. And then next minute his head came in over the top of the car like a um, like a giraffe and he said, uh, word of advice, Liam. I said, what, David? He says, uh, how's your Latin? He said, oh, I don't know, I studied Latin in school. And he said, uh, you know, Hannibal came over the Alps with the cannibals and all the rest, or the, and the elephants. And he said, you know, uh, briefly stated, nil carborundum illegitimae. Mm -hmm. Don't let the bastards get you down. So... <clears throat> I, I, and that's so, why Chris Christopher was a man in the 70s when I heard him sing this. So Wonderful. in fact, it was a legitimate uh, non carbon undrum. Ah, Mary. So you said it the wrong way around. No, it's sorry, well, can I say it to you? Well, no, he said it the wrong I, way I, No, it's not he or any. No, I, I've looked this up time and time again. So the only thing is, so the carbon undrum, the nil carbon undrum illegitimate, whichever way you look at the fact is, lots of us could confuse the Latin in lots of ways. But yes. I think in English, it's quite succinct. Is that don't let the bastards get you down. Absolutely. Yeah. And the other thing is, that's from the 2003 album, is something like Freedom Songs, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we were, right, so it would have been possibly around that period, just after that. If it was 2003, it wouldn't be that long after, the, around the time that we sing it. We saw him to sing that, so it might have been in that space. So the next song we're going to sing is one of the extras, Paul had in there. We sung this a couple of times over the last number of weeks. A uh, lead belly song, uh, Good Night Irene. Yeah, so we have got Natalie with us now, and Ruth says lovely singing. Louis Brown says beautiful blaspheming. <laughs> yeah, which yeah. is the blasphemer? The, the bastards. All right. How could that be blasphemy? Well, I don't know. Louis, blasphemy. Louis will explain. Years, Louis, Louis. Too many years in the Christian Brothers we all spent. Too many years in the Christian but Brothers. What are we putting this? Uh, so this is, I'd say, in the way I've been, look at the great things since we started, repurposed this whole two song books, the labour of love talk about this. Um, but we're trying to, what we do is for for screen reason, that we've got the words much bigger on the screen, etc. And uh, also I just put in the top there, the number gives us an idea where to play this. So it's a lot better. So we're playing it in four. <coughs> oh, do you think 
we say something before we start? You can, of course. That Mary. Paul's wife is called Irene, and she's a front. Uh, All right, now she's is at it. the front, yeah. <laughs> in this battle. Right. All the McVitties are down at the back, Paul, but your wife is up at the front. We know. That was a joke, Mary. All right. <laughs> yeah, sure. So I'm reading this book today, Mary's Follow Me, called Educated. And uh, so it's a book about, well, it, it's placed in the more, 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 more Mormon, yeah. Mormonian community. And, uh, <laughs> Mormon community. There's a story there about it, the, the father's telling the kids a story that in their village, uh, a dog bit a child. And therefore, a couple, a particular couple who would be a bit obnoxious, they, they then uh, coerced the mayor of the village to... Uh, put out an edict that no family was allowed to have more than two dogs. Mm. Uh, not taking account of the fact that the dog that bit the child didn't belong to anybody. Mm. That's why okay. they only allowed the... the, the no, no, did you not get that? I did, yeah. What? Well, actually, I got it before because we talked about it more. What, what did you get? Walking. It's got nothing to do with it. I know it's nothing to do with it. <laughs> it's not to do with the protected dog. No, but so an ordinance was put in place that it was completely inordinate to put in inappropriate. But we had an ordinance nonetheless. That's why Chinese families, by the way, were only, only like to have one child. Because because a child bit a person. Another another <laughs> child. <laughs> Come on. I tell you, it's to drink. It's to drink. You drink the desert. You see, tell you. It's all those Irish coffees. It's that big lump of bacon we had before before we came on here. All right, come on. Come on, Irene, get on. Get on your bike. Then, and Irene, Irene hate me a little well. No, no, sorry, in this case, it's Irene and Cork, okay? Last Saturday night I got married. Jeremy and my wife settled down. Now me and my wife, we are parted. Gonna take a little stroll. First million. No, not the guy who wrote the song. Good enough, guy... making heute einem spielen band mit Ankel. Oh, bis dem nachst. So, is bis dem nachst mean, and Natalie, you might help us with this, right? And Jorgen, 
We're delighted that you've joined us. We have good memories of when we met here in Ireland. We have good memories. So you might help us with that, um, Natalie. You might uh, transmit. Good enough. Mike and Heute einen spielen band mit Ankel. So I'm not sure. Du spiele some spiel and game night with Ankel. Machen I'm today. Today I make a, a play night with Ankel. I'm not sure where Ankel is. Anyway. Yeah, um, Natalie wants to ask a question. Sorry, Natalie's wondering where, where did, you, where did I find the good hair cutter? Isn't that wonderful, isn't it? I mean, it's really interesting. Some of the most upsetting things for people, <laughs> particularly women in this era now, and and guys too, even our T-shirt, the wonderful, wonderful Wizard of Oz. Uh, what's his name? Leo Varadkar. He was on the Late Late Show and he was really concerned about getting his hair cut. Now, his hair wasn't particularly long or anything. It was just whatever it was. But the loss of the opportunity to go to hairdressers so that you can confess whatever bullshit's in your head to your hairdresser and pay them a load of money when paying a hundred quid to, for somebody to pretend to wash their hair. So, yes, I'll tell you now, I have saved enough money to buy a couple of guitars by the fact that I no longer have hair, even though I used to have really long hair. So I have a machine, a thing that goes around my head, and I actually, most of the time, I do it on my own. Um, Mary, every point, now and then, points out there's a little bit sticking up. Would you, say, would, you be, so, would you be good blonde? Mary's gonna gray? Mary's gonna, gonna cut keep, some of her hair and, and I'm, I'm gonna, gonna stick it on here. Like I'm gonna have it around. I'll have a little baldy bit at the top and I'm gonna <laughs> and then I'll 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 pretend I'm John Fogarty and Creedence Clear yeah. Water Revival saying so what saying who'll stop the rain? Anyway, what are we gonna do next then? Well, we're going to try Well Below the Valley, even if we're not sure how well this will go. So the song Well Below the Valley is a lovely song. I'm just as I've written it, it's in the second book. Let's see. And I'm just wondering, is it in, uh, it must be near the end, so it must be in the W's. Mm. Uh, lovely song, I, I suppose as we were singing it before, well, well, well below the valley. Uh, there's bits of it that go a bit funny, as in, all the verses are there, but it sort of goes a wee bit around in circles. With, but again, my memories of Christy Moore singing this song, <coughs> and the lovely lilt in it. And again, there's only one or two, there's only two chords that I think A minor and G. So that, by the way, that was the second uh, album by Flankstree and it was... Sorry. It was recorded in Kent, when was that? In 1973. Uh, and it was on, yeah, it was on the Christy Moore album, uh, what was it? Live at the Point in 1994. And it's about murder incest and oppression That's also an ankle sorry Jorgen delighted ankle means your grandson wonderful wonderful and I'm, and I'm delighted and I'm sure lots of others here uh, I'm uh, lots of others here wish you well to be able to spend time uh, with your grandson I'm not sure whether it's physical time where they have to do it online but I'm sure lots of grandparents really value uh, and miss the tactility and the connectivity with grandchildren and very, very much so vice versa so lots of look of looking forward people have to do to be in contact with their loved ones. So again, just to say a little bit more about this song before we go. So tra traditional songs sometimes dealt with difficult subject matter that wouldn't be spoken about. So in this case, it was about incest, murder, oppression. And um, who Christy learned it from um, a, a, an old singer called John Riley. He was an old traditional singer as well. So we're not sure where it dated from or how old it is actually. She swore big grass and she swore.
swarthy corn did her true love had never been born at the well below the valley of Ringer of the lily of but you right among the bushes oh he said young girl you swear and wrong for six my children you had born at the well below the valley of Ringer of the lily of but you right among the bushes oh if you be a man of noble fame, you'll tell to meet it, the father of them at the well below the valley of Green Girls and Lily of Wait among the bushes of To do it and buy your brother John at the well below the valley of One of them buy your uncle Dan at the well below the valley of there's two of them by your father, dear, at the well below the valley, oh. Ring girls the lily, oh, right among the bushes, oh. If you be a man of noble fame, you'll tell to me for the top and the dam at the well below the valley, oh. Ring girls the lily, oh, right among the bushes, oh. There's two of them buried beneath the tree at the well below the valley, oh. And not that you're buried beneath the stone at the well below the valley, oh. Two of them in the angels feel at the well below the valley, oh. Green girls and lily, oh, but you're right among the bushes, oh. If you be a man of noble fame, you'll tell to me what'll happen, me said. Oh, you'll be seven years of ringing the bell at the well below the valley, oh. And seven years of burning in hell at the well below the valley, oh. I'll be seven years of ringing the bell with the Lord above me, save me soul from burning in hell at the well below the valley, oh. Green girls and lily, oh, but you're right among the bushes, oh. So you know what it is, that's a song, that's what I'm saying, it's a song which really needs, um, I think it needs uh, Ray Atchison on the bower on to sing nice. that song because it's, and probably in some ways it, uh, uh, it, it, uh, it lends itself to a cappella type singing with lots of percussion, I think it's a lovely, lovely, lovely song. And this is also known, in, in the past has been known as the Maid and the Palmer. So if any of you know what a palmer is, he was a sin eater and a palmer is a pilgrim. He carries a palm leaf and it's turned into a cross and handed out on Palm Sunday. So again, hi, Joe Kane. Yeah, good. And again, guys, to remind you, it's just after uh, eight o'clock in the event that the stream drops out. We've had a, on the, a handful of nights, I have to say given that we're uh, broadcasting live stream every night at seven o'clock uh, Greenwich Mean Time, and that means two or three o'clock in California and then somewhere in Pittsburgh and Virginia and Sao Paulo and over to Machete later on in the evening. We've only lost the signal, lost the stream once or twice. So if we do, what we tend to do is always come back in again. Uh, we kill the stream and then restart again. So you'll find that on the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other thing is, so again, uh, we're delighted to have sung the songs for uh, Paul Flaherty tonight, the five songs, which were Boyd's Anatomy, Bright Blue, Rose, Joe Hill, uh, Oro Shade of Ahawalia and Sam Stone, and those couple of extra songs. And to say that, it, we, as we said last night, talking about the idea of endings and, you know, building up towards Sunday night, which will be two months to the, to the date that we started doing these daily on online sing songs for the soul and in terms of both celebrating and reflecting on them i ask people to think about you know the through the through the through the lenses of what went well what went wrong and what would be better uh, in terms of your own experience of this environment um i mean our just explain our objectives in doing it were to you know how could we address the ensuing 
Armageddon of physical isolation from people, which could go on and on and on for months. How could we do something in response given our age profile or all of the aspects of our reality plus living on the edge of nowhere, plus the fact I'm an engineer, Mary's a nurse, I'm not a microbiologist, a uh, statistician or anything else. And uh, I know my place in relation to that. But we felt that if we could take the spirit of fun that we have had already been experiencing in our nightly or our weekly sing songs that we had here, which we always held on a Wednesday evening from seven to 10. That's us, metal, keol, the singing club, guitar, ukulele, etc. Um, where we would sit around groups of six to 16 people around the table. We'd put a few euro on the table to pay for the tea and biscuits. And out of our two song books of 500 songs, we would literally one after the other go round and choose a song which we we would all then play together. What do they so call that? So that was the essence of this. Do they call that a round robin or something? What do they call it? Well, we just call it Mel Keola. I, I know, guys. I mean when you go round like that. I don't know, is that a round robin? Is that a round robin, guys? Okay, if you were I'm well, not sure, I'm not sure. Is that really helpful? Does that information help you a lot? No, but some yeah. people would know it as that. So, you you know, yeah. regularly we can, well, you can have a rosary. We talk you about can, things if that you're, have nothing to do with If you ever did a rosary with the kids, you just go around and you do something like a rosary. It's just a circle. The only thing about the circle, I want to know, Mary always insisted it went clockwise. Oh, absolutely, without a shadow. And it started with her. And it ended no, with her. No, you're ah, wrong. Ah, that's true. You're so wrong. I you might be wrong, but I might be so wrong, wrong, but I'm you correct. Are wrong. I'm correct. Wrong. No, you're right. not correct. I might be wrong in saying it, but yeah. I'm correct in what I said. Well, what about anyway. those who tell lies <laughs> and who, don't, who think they're actually telling the truth? So again, and my friend Raul in, in Sao Paulo who joins every now and who's, who's, who's really working hard to complete his PhD after a lifetime, where he's talking about his, content, his research questions around lie and trauma. Um, so that's a thought for you. So, oh yeah, sorry, we did have a request, especially yeah. tonight. It, was a, it came in on a, a late uh, comment, but I think maybe in the wrong day. So it's for my friend or our friend, Sean Lawless, my friend, because my friend and Mary's friend, because I she loves bread his bread. Him, because he, he loves my bread, and, and I Mary, bread for him. Still, he, he's still salivating over that last loaf of bread, bread he got a long time ago. Oh. So Sean, I talked to him earlier when he was on his... Uh, having his constitutional walk, walk around his, uh, his garden uh, this afternoon and he had asked us to sing Oh My Darling Clementine so we're delighted to sing this song for you. I think it's in the second book I think it's uh, is it Clementine or what is it? Oh My, my Darling Clementine Oh, is it? So it might I be believe it's own. so, yeah So I wanted to suggest to you that while we've we've Three more people. Just give me the three people. Well, tomorrow uh, night we got Peggy, and then so we've there's Peggy Stenglein, Stenglein, Sheila McMahon in on Pittsburgh, Saturday and night. Sheila in Dundalk, and, and night. we've got Fergus from Drummond from Drummond Town in South County Down. So we'll have the, the, your five songs each, but the, we're going to have lots of other space in between. Then, and I would like to suggest that if you want to put forward songs. Uh, particularly songs that we've sung over the last number of weeks, maybe review and reflect on what have they been like for us. Uh, and we'll try and sing them together and enjoy them. And we'll have other conversations about different futures. I mean, I think it's important to just to stress that from Mary and I's point of view, this is an opportunity to come to your crossroads and have a look on what do we want to do next. But we do have ideas about what we want, what we want to do next and see how that works out with different people, all right? So, so, Mar so Maria Fordham says, Evening all, uh, from Bedford. Uh, love this one. It's a great sing-along. And I think we've been very mindful in the songs. It's really important we get... This is difficult as it is in a distance, but we can all close our eyes, as, as he said in that Desperados wait for time. We just closed our eyes and drum drummed up some old kitchen and sang another line of this old song. We're playing it on two. Oh my darling, oh my darling, oh my darling, Clementine. For Sean Lawless, Joe, you're lost and gone forever. Dreadful sorrow, Clementine. In a cavern, in a canyon, excavating for a mine. Dwelt a miner, 49er, and his dog. As a fairy, though her shoes were number nine, airing boxes without topses, sandals were for Clementine. Drove she ducklings to the water every morning just at night, hit her foot against the splinter, fell into the foaming brine. Oh, 
Oh my darling, oh my darling, oh my darling Clementine, you are lost and gone forever. My darling, oh my darling, oh my darling Clementine, you were lost and gone forever, dreadful sorry Clementine. Then the minor 49er soon began to fret and pine, thought he ought to join his daughter, now he's with his Clementine. Now I miss how I miss her, how I miss my Clementine Till I kissed her little sister and I forgot my Clementine Oh my darling, oh my darling, oh my darling Clementine You were lost and gone forever, dreadful sorry Churchyard near the canyon where the miracle cup and twine there grow roses and the posies first the lights for them in time. Oh my darling, oh my darling, oh my darling Clementine, you are lost and gone forever, dreadful sorry Clementine. Tell us who wrote that song, will you? Or who sang um, it? Oh, in my dreams she still doth haunt me, robed in garments soaked in brine. Then she rises from the water and I kiss my Clementine. Oh, oh my darling, oh my darling, oh my darling Clementine, you are lost and gone forever. You know, I think somebody said there, yeah, lovely sing-along song, but that's that's it. I mean, I would hope that what well, we're delighted about these books is that there's lots and lots of songs that are fundamentally sing-along songs and that you can enjoy. So there's one song, there's a song that Kathy Anderson asked us to sing a couple of times, um, and we sang it again the night of Peter's birthday during this crisis, the, the lockdown, which is sunshine uh, you are my sunshine and i think maybe we'll so we'll do that so what i'm suggesting in the period between now and sunday that we you know we we revisit some of the songs that we've sung maybe reflect on how we are singing them somewhat better hopefully uh, plus we we'll do some of the ones that we spent a bit of time learning on because i think it's really important for those people who felt coming into this process that they might have been very confident either singing or playing along that you've gained confidence and uh, what is it? Uh, what are we looking for? The song. What do you call it? Sunshine. You are you are my, my sunshine. sunshine. Oh, what, oh, oh, you are my sorry. So it's right in front of me there. Is this um, book one or two? That's in one. Yeah. So um, we just hope like that you've enjoyed as much as we have. I mean, again, we we're playing a lot more than if we normally we normally you know we wouldn't be that disciplined. So it's been a great discipline for us to do it, and we hope to. I say we're going to do two songs we're, we're working on out of our third book that we're looking at again today. We are going to sing those for Sunday night, which are um, Bees Wing, which uh, is on a Christy Moore song. Yeah, we're going to do that before. But we, well, we won't do it now. No, not tonight. Not tonight. No, no. Um, not tonight. Thank you. But Mary and I heard this song last year in uh, probably late September. We were in France and uh, suddenly I had this app on my phone which... You could just have a world map and you could press a button geographically and press it and you hear radio stations. So I pressed the button on Highland Radio in Donegal, where I just pressed this, but there was a group called, what do they call them? Uh, donkeys. What do you call them? Uh, you know, Paul will... Rattling do. Donkeys. No, not, not Rattling Donkeys, no, no. Not screaming, shouting, uh, no, 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 no. Whistling donkeys. Whistling donkeys. I, I don't think. think it's whistling donkeys. Well, we, anyway. Uh, we know, know the song, but actually will. that's where we heard the song first and... Uh, we heard Christy Murray's version after the lovely, lovely song. And the other song we're going to do is uh, 
the war after the war. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those in a PDF so we can see them on the screen, just play it along with me, hoping people can do that. Uh, but so put up, you know, throw out songs that you'd like us to sing. We'd love Nigel to. Nigel says, Freddie Quinn was the singer of that song. Freddie Quinn. Of, of, uh, oh, my, of Clementine, all right. So, so this is on three. I don't know. Oh, three, three is here, it? Sorry. Here. Okay, good, yeah. So we need to modify that. So again, as I say, these books are... Um, a, a constant update in terms of now that we're adding in the capo position that suit us so it's really important again I'd say to people find a pitch that you like get a capo place it there and enjoy the songs at a, at a, at a, where your voice is comfortable so you can entertain yourself at least with the songs so capo three the other night dear, as I lay sleeping I heard I dream I'm just thinking as we sing those songs that the magic of singing those songs in company is the company uh, and I think that's the beautiful element of a lot of Natalie, I think the songs that we have in there is that they they lend themselves to that Natalie says it is the whistling donkeys it is the whistling donkeys yeah lovely name but they say the, the guy who sings that does a lovely lovely rendition of that song so what I see, what other songs do you remember us doing over the last period of time that you think went we well for the, the sing songs? Some of the nice songs, ones like um, uh, let's see, whiskey in the jar. Whiskey in the jar. Okay, so we're just going to uh, out of the top for heads here, but I would like if people there would um, give us a, a cry out there for a couple of songs. We have a few more songs help this us, evening. Help us. But we, well, it's not. But I, I mean, because it's uh, other people choosing, so that'll help everyone, including us. What about Tennessee Waltz as well? 
Answer. Okay, we'll do this answer. We'll do whisk in there. Whisk in the jar, yeah. Mm. So don't worry, you don't need so, to help us. We have lots of, we'll think of lots of things. I don't know, we would like you to, to offer your suggestions. And if you don't, we're going to sing the song anyway, like. You know what I mean? What do you say, like? <clears throat> okay, so we're playing this open. Come on, John Coyle. So, John, <coughs> I hope things are well with you. High pressure, high pressure, high pressure. Good, good, good. Isobars, hectobars, and all the rest. So, John, uh, hopefully, uh, not hopefully, in the not too distant future, we'll be able to play again tomorrow. Ten guitars. Sorry. I met our friend Tommy Gallagher yesterday in the supermarket. I thought he was going to rob the place. He was all, he was all covered up like a, like a bandit. We didn't nearly recognise each other. All we could see was each other's eyes. Surreal, surreal. So Imagine everybody coming in to rob the bank. I mean, everybody coming in to rob the bank. Everybody coming in has all got their masks and all. The poor Every bank teller doesn't know who to respond to. No, absolutely. Hey, hey, listen here, uh, 10 guitars is a request from Dave Kelly. Yeah, good. So we're going to sing that. So we got 10 guitars, we got Tennessee Waltz. Come on, let's move along. Okay. Right back of the, wish to the back of the chapel there. Open. No, as I was going over the cart and carry mountain. I first produced my pistol for she stole away me rapier. I couldn't shoot the water so a prisoner I was taken with my ring to me. Whack for my daddy oh, whack for my daddy oh, there's whiskey in the jar. All the some men take the light in the fishing and the fowl. The light in the hurling and the bowling, but me I take the light in the juice of the barley and curtain pretty fair maids in the morning, bright and early with my ring a Whack for my daddy oh, whack for my daddy oh, there's whiskey in the jar. Oh, if any.
So I'm 20 years of age again. Now I'm singing that song, I'm 20 years of age. It's uh, the end of August, early September, and I'm driving around the country in an old Mini. You remember those cars, Minis, old Minis? And uh, four of us had bought the Mini between us for 40 old Irish punts. Imagine 10 pound each, 10 pound, 10 pound a piece, me boys, we'd buy this Mini. Some banger off a fellow with no tax, no insurance, no nothing. And we were going to go on our big tour around the country. On the day, only two people arrived to go on a tour. Myself and a fellow called Paddy Wise, whose sister Mary has been listening in a couple of nights from Newfoundland. And of course, Paddy, his father was dead. And Paddy was the man of the house, really, I suppose. And he had often driven uh, the, the family car, a Volkswagen VW Beetle. He was used to that. But I'd never driven in my life before. But because I put my money in, I demanded a right to drive my car. And we drove around Kilorglan down where the puck fair is on Kerry and there was a leak in the fuel tank and we used to have to stop every now and then and pour petrol in from an old can we were carrying along. And we top speed about 45 mile an hour and me without a clue how to change gear or drive or worrying about insurance or those were the days. But the reason I sang that song was on two consecutive nights, one down in Ballybunion, down in Ballybunion and Tralee. Outside, not Tralee, where do you call it? Ballybunion, Ballybunion. In the, I um, can't remember, somebody might remember the, the old dance hall name in Ballybunion, but who did we see but Phil Leonard and Tin Lizzy. And a majestic looking beast of a man, big back curly hair, and the stance of him, the stand, and that just magic. Here we are, I'm from Drimina, me and the ma, she's massive. And I'm singing that song, and there was a couple who were with the group who were jiving to that song on the floor. This, people wouldn't think, but that's a, they could sing. People. And this this couple were doing jitterbugging, and everyone magic. And I thought they were old people. I was about, what I would say, 20, or probably in the mid 30s. But the following night, we drove that same Mini up to Leisureland in God. Salt Hill and Galway. And on two consecutive nights, I had the pleasure of seeing Phil Leonard in his most magical, natural space before. He wasn't, didn't seem to be out of his head and drugs or anything, singing that song, mm. Whiskey in a Jar. That's singing do 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 That's Onya's country, by the way. Onya, you might have been there too. Uh, let's Joyce's know, let country, know Katie Banner, no, that's not there. So no, that was, no. what are we in Tennessee, so you, Walt? Sorry, no, I know no, we're no, running no. on in time. I know, but maybe we get ready. says, Love Whiskey in the Jar, it was my first Irish folk song. That's right, I remember you telling us that. Yeah, Maria loves it. Michelle Coughlin is here with us tonight as well. Hello, Michelle. Good. I don't know whether we've seen you before. Hello, hello, well, she Michelle. Has been Goodbye. In her before, oh, yeah. very good. So just to say, we're on our we're on our te de Tennessee Waltz or Tennessee. Is it what is it? Uh, Tennessee Waltz. It's three three seven book one. Well, it might be under Tennessee. So we're doing the, then we're going to do ten guitars. Yeah. Dave Kelly mentioned get another lovely song. dance and so I'm sure it's up somewhere up it I know when we started it's, it's certainly up a little I'm not sure what uh, but it'll be a couple of let's see. Uh, I was dancing oh sorry I need to put up hang on sorry four. Uh, I was dancing so we're going to try it up on four I know it's shown open there but same same chords you try it up on four <clears throat> I, you know, I love Leonard Cohen singing this song. Lots of people have sung it, but I love Leonard Cohen. I was dancing with my daughter to the Tennessee Wall. When an old friend I happened to see, I introduced him to my daughter. Yeah. 
see a bracket missing as Mary says at the end there this is the sort of detail that matters I obviously I, I I wiped that out inadvertently when I was making those changes so, so yeah we've uh, one more song yeah. which is Dave uh, Kelly asked it when I set that up Mary on um, the 10 guitars That's yeah yeah so saying. in the meantime Louis Brown good re good rendition of one of my favorite songs was introduced to the song by Thin Lizzy so Anya says live minutes from Leisureland and that did me made me think of the limit, yeah. Maria Fordham likes song as well, so there we are. Ten. Ten. Two. Ten get oh maybe it's in the first book, so I, I think it's in the first book. So again, if anybody hasn't yet downloaded yeah, a copy of these PDFs. It's, it's just the previous Oh dear, what yeah. is it? So ten videos. Sorry, I should have realised it was just before then. If you haven't uh, taken time to download these uh, PDFs, it's fellas says when they're gone, they're gone. Um, but uh, do go into uh, join the mm, that's interesting I don't really know what's, what's happened that song sorry I just need to switch to another version of that book projection sound sorry um, but do go join the Metal Kjold song group group and you'll be able to download a copy of the PDFs and again people have asked us can you get physical copy of the books when we get to the next phase of close down etc we'll we'll keep in contact if people want copies of the book we'll make sure you can get them I mean, we had a very efficient mechanism of posting them out to people. The, the pair of books together cost 40 euro. They're fantastic. I mean, as a as books to play with and play out of, they're wonderful, 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 um, giggable, lastable book. Lovely. Once you want to lie around the house, pick up a book like that, and straight away you're... 15,000 steps today, folks. Well, we did, okay? okay? Right, Dave, let's go. I have a man, a man, all day. Is what you do. Oh, dance, 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 dance 
to my ten guitar And very soon you'll know just where you are Through the eyes of love you'll see a thousand stars When you dance, dance, dance to my ten guitar When you dance, dance, dance to my ten guitar so we're singing that for your wife, Vera, as she dances, dances, dances to the ten guitars and the mariachi. Do you know we'll sing? You know, the, what's the mariachi? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come here. Now that you have her up on the floor, what do you call the one? Crystal Swing, we're singing it. What do you call it? What do you call Crystal Swing? He sing? plays tequila. She, she plays tequila. tequila. Is that, she is play, it he plays. Is it, what's it called? She plays te tequila. Is I it? think he talks dirty in Spanish. She plays tequila. Is it she? Okay, so what is I it? Think he, he, she plays. Uh, well, it, it makes a difference as regards where, where it is in the S S S. She a, she she. So it's not she. No. So it must be might he, be he. he. So we don't know who is on the tequila. Please. She talks dirty. Okay. He oh, drinks yeah. tequila. That's it. We we'll try this. Tequila. So <clears throat> I wonder one book here. Yeah. I just want to see. Now that we're up on the walls, he what drinks. do we do that walls and also guitars? Probably better than up one or two. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Tequila. tequila. Um. Everybody knows So we're going to play this three up, all right? Get our position three up. So you just have to come off your ten guitars. Everybody knows a little Mr. Rose, queen of the trailer park. But she's a hot pepper and you never forget her. Lannigan's Ball. Oh, we were yeah, going to sing Lannigan's Ball. We never like, sang Lannigan's Ball. Lannigan's Ball. Three, three. Lannigan's Ball. So, you see, that's what happens. You just take off when you're having a sing song. And that's what it's supposed to be about. Imagine you're out there in somebody's house, hopefully a house where you feel comfortable and welcome in. Lannigan's Ball. Does anybody know Lannigan, Lannigan, Lannigan's Ball? Yeah, we stepped out the night. I don't know whether where we have Lannigan's Ball, first or second book. Let's just try it. Because it's another variation oh, of the Mariachi Lannigan's Ball. Now, the reason, by the way, we never sang that before, so this is a bit like this is a Ray Atchison job here. This would be much better, I say. Sorry, I'm just trying to. I'm trying to find. We we'll play it open, all right. Try and open, okay. Lanigan's ball, and we'll open. So the reason we're singing this again in terms of the idea of a sing song on a hooli and how you 
It'd be great to sing Phil the Fluter's Ball, which is, I never might even sing that before we go tomorrow or Monday nights. Yeah, yeah. In the town of the time when Jeremy Lanigan battered a wiggly at the shell of his father died, made him a mannequin, left him a farm and a nigger so proud. He said to be sure, get free invitation for all of the boys and girls you might ask. Haven't been asked to friends and relations, dancing like bees around us been cast. It was lessons of booze and right for the ladies, potatoes and cakes and bacon and tea. Nolan's, Nolan's, all the old ladies, curtain the girls and dancing the way. With sounds and brown, there's plenty of water, it's hard to be sounded through Darazel Hall. Sweet pretty grey, the wreckage is dark, they're singing together at Lannigan's Ball. It's six long months, they spend in Dublin, and six long months doing nothing at all. Six long months, they spend in Dublin, and learning to they were doing all kinds of nonsensical polkas all in around in the world like a jig and a Julia nice and banished their nonsense out on the floor and a read and a jig oh the girls could all get mad at me for the dot the ceiling would fall I spent six months at Brooks Academy learning to dance for Lannigan's Ball hey six months I spent in Dublin six months doing nothing at all six months I spent I stepped in again, learn it to dance for Lannigan's Ball. Hey, hey! And then the boys all merry, the girls all hearty, dancing around in couples and groups. An accident had, and Terence McCarty, he put his foot in his mentality soup. He fell down in a faint and cried, only murdered and caught in his brothers and gathered them all. The candy swore he'd go on a fertile league at the Vengeance Lannigan's Ball. Six months, they sing in Dublin, six months, they went nothing at all. Six months, they sing in Dublin, learning to dance for Lannigan's Ball. For Lannigan's ball. Hey, boys, oh, boys, and then there was ructions. I get a kick from Phelan with you. I soon replied to his own deductions, kicked up a hell of a hullabaloo. Hull and Maloney, the piper, was nearly entrangled and lifted his pipes and his chatters and all. Boys and girls, they all got tangled and that put an end to Lannigan's ball. Hey, six months, he's been in Dublin, six months, he's been in Dublin, six months, he's been in Dublin, learning to dance for Lannigan's ball. <laughs> oh, six months to think and double and six months to end up in the car. Six months to think and double and learn to dance for learning to fall. She stepped down and I stepped in again. I stepped down and she stepped in again. She stepped down and I stepped in again. Learn to dance for learning to fall. That's open, isn't it? You know, the problem is, see, there's some of those songs to me, I find, look, I think I would love to be able to. I would love to be able to sing those songs with someone like Ray playing the bower on and then somebody knocking in the guitar as well because what I love about those songs is trying to get your mouth around those words. When I was 20 years of age, I had all those words. And the great thing about it is, some before we go, I must put up on the camera one night some, the book, the little handwritten book, because we played these from old records at the time and half of the uh, words I didn't get right, but I loved, you know, I thought it was I thought it was Father McHugh. See that Phelan McHugh, I thought it was... Boys, oh boys, and then there were drunctions. I get a kick from Father McHugh. I still reply to his with the drunctions. Get the hell of a hell of a loo. Hey, as it happens. Newton night, Newton night. Ah, oh, look at that Come stick here. there. Uh, I want to ask you a question. He drinks yeah. tequila. Where do we put the cap on? Three, I think. Three. Where's the tequila? Three. Okay, there we are. We've come again to... We're in countdown time. Imagine we're, we're going to be freed from incarceration. And what's the island your mom was on? The African fella. What do you call him? Mandela. He was out in an island somewhere for 26 oh, years. Not, not right, Devil's right, Island. Devil's was it? Island. Devil's right, Island. Right, not Ricker right, Island. Right, Something like that. Though. But imagine in the last three days, so you're getting out in a couple of days. I'm sure sing us an old song. Sing us the song you sang at your mother's wedding and all the rest. And then he was saying, no, no, I'm not going to sing for you. I'm on strike. So we're going to sing for you. So we're uh, we're going to leave you again tonight with... Uh, Nigel, and Nigel and Vivian were jump, hopping around the kitchen for the... Yeah, leaping about the boat in the holy ground. So, well, never mind it. What do you call it? What do you call that other song? Fill the fluters. Fill the fluters. Well, you heard the fill the fluter from the town of Valley Muck. Sure things were going right for him and far to Mank was broke. So we sent the just sent out. And 
A letter to his neighbours, one and all. Sure, I'd have to love you, have me pleasure at me evening at the bar. Every night, he would send the little, 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 little. Do we have that was one, there, do we? Not, we have it in a second. No. We do that tomorrow night. But wouldn't it be lovely, you know, so long. So I used to have the opportunity to watch the punch and Judy. Well, now either. Or no, we're going. It's fitting. We'll go Come on, it's time to go. What do you call we'll it? We go, we'll go then. Yeah. Parting glass, the parting glass. Yeah, okay. That parting, what am I doing? Parting glass. So again, Again, the lovely element of this song that we've been singing every night, Happy to Meet, Sorry to Part, as Horse Hips would say. Um, oh. And uh, it's on capo position four. And again, until tomorrow night, Friday night. Yeah, um, when it's going to be Peggy's, uh, Peggy's song choice <coughs> tomorrow and, night. Uh, again, I'd ask you any more reflections over the next couple of days of how this is, you know, what's it like, what's it been like for you, darling, okay? It's been really very good for me, darling. Great. Very special. Yeah, special, very perhaps. Very special. And perhaps for Mary, perhaps. too. Perhaps for me. Diego, what's it been like for you? Diego. We had Diego out today, and he met the little girls that he met two weeks ago, Colin Ferder's kids, the girl, the special little girls. Diego, and two weeks ago, he, he put the frighteners on them, because they, the problem with little kids, when they run around, the dog keeps thinking it's a game, it's a chase. Come on, say hello tonight. He was actually quite cross with them at the time, barking at them, which boy, was completely I'm not in his nature. It just wasn't in his Diego. nature at all. Mm. But what I discovered was when I brought him home and I was feeling him along here, and uh, that he was, it was like a burst, a, a, you know, it was a bump or something, but I, I discovered his little big fang, or his, what do you call it? What his, do you call incisor, it? his incisor, his incisor, on ins the left hand side. His incisor here on this it's side here was... Uh, sticking out of the was sticking out, it was dislocated. Yeah. So the poor fellow was in awful pain, and then anyway, we took him away and he got, he got the, uh, with the needle in the, um, the dentist, and he was like, he was... He was, really, he was anaesthetised. He was like an anaesthetised alcoholic drunk um, for a day. He was, and I, when your man, I had to hold him and your man stuck the needle in him. And he could just see him was zonk out. But anyway, the great thing is he reconnected with those little kids today and he befriended them again. It was really important that they made their peace gorgeous, you know. Anyway, um, parting glass. Mm -hmm. Until tomorrow evening, folks. Seven o'clock Greenwich Mean Time. Delighted to have had your company. Um... And we were in the zone tonight. That was because of the bacon and cabbage. The bacon. We didn't have cabbage, by the way. Was that not cabbage? Yeah, you had turnips and carrots Sorry, and broccoli turnips, carrots and, and broccoli. green beans, Jesus. potatoes and ham. With all of all, of all the money Camp that they I spent. Do you spend it in, in, in good company? Come on, Sheila McMahon, Camp 1 4. And all the And ruby lips, I own she has my heart and throat. So fill to me the heart and glass. Good night and joy be with you all. Of all the comrades that ever I had, the sorry. Wish me one more day to stay. But since it falls into my lot that I should rise and you should know, I gently rise and softly call. Good night and joy. Guys, uh, it'd be great to have you all here, there, and everywhere. Um, 
and you know we've we've enjoyed every night we've done of this we've enjoyed it and the fellow says quit while you're ahead um and we've got three more nights so on three day countdown for this tomorrow night we're going to have petty stingline from um pittsburgh and putting forward our five famous five selection and then uh, sheila mcmahon from the dock on saturday night and fergus too from drummond tyne and county down and for others then i really i'm asking you it's inviting you to Throw in the songs of the songs we've been singing over the last period of time. You know, put them out there. What were the ones that you liked and enjoyed? And I suppose I'm very mindful also of the idea of the sing-along aspect of this uh, that we might do it. So for tonight, uh, uh, tonight we wish you all well and uh, looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow night. Maria. Yes, we are indeed, yeah. So in the meantime, just think about a song that you would like us to sing along with you tomorrow evening. So we'd be very happy to do that. All right, well. And then, as we say, it's Peggy's you see, time. we're off to watch Harry Bosch and Sean. Lord has got the hint. So he's near uh, episode 10 of series one of Harry Bosch. And we're ahead of you, Sean. We're in. We started series five now. Great. It's like the old Columbo stuff. Lovely. Great to be able to... You know, it's a great thing after doing this. We chill out and we just binge yeah. on Netflix. So we're real beach binge bums as well. Good luck, folks. Good night. God bless.